So we're here now live with Artsakh State Minister Ruben Vartanian. Mr. Vartanian, thank you for making the time and uh, letting the diaspora hear from you as well. Thank you for organizing this. So we'll just jump right into it. I know people have a million and one questions and they want to hear from you. Can you tell us what's happened in the last two weeks and what the response from the people in Artsakh has been? Uh, in one hand, it's a quite unique situation because we have full blockade of the road, which was only one road we had to the Armenia, to the world, basically. And it's now blocked by, like we name it, uh, quasi eco activist who people who blame that we are trying to defend eco uh, ecological situation in this region. At the same time, I won't say for entire international community, this is nothing special. It's already, it's continuity of the strategy of Azerbaijan, which was, um, they tried to execute the strategy after the November 9 uh, document was signed, slowly, step by step, pushing out Armenians from Artsakh. Mm -hmm. And um, this is part of the long-term strategy that we've been executing. For ethnic cleansing. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit about what the people's reaction has been to this? You know, I'm really proud to be here in this moment with the Artsakh people. I'm very puzzled and shocked by their response. They are, of course, it's a challenging time, it's a dramatic time, it's a winter, it's a lot of problems that we face, we're facing every day, but no depression, no emotional reactions it's uh, they said we are ready we we know what we're doing why we're doing this and why we need to stay strong and come more t close to, to, to each other this is why it's really i'm positively surprised how this blockade help all of us better to understand how strong we are together i think people now feel more uh, we are more convinced about the relationship between the, 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 the government and uh, society, which was also a big challenge before. I think this blockade, in one hand, created a lot of problems, in one hand, mm -hmm. gave us a really unique chance to restart some of type of the um, relationship between the government and society, inside society, to feel more what we're all in the same uh, ship and we are really have no choice, only together we can go ahead and, and uh, defeat all these uh, problems. Absolutely. As you mentioned, Mr. Vartanian, rightfully so, that uh, these quote-unquote ecological protests, anyone that's familiar with Azerbaijani society knows that these protests don't happen unless it's state-sanctioned or, or approved. Can you tell us a little bit what their demands are of us? And these demands change since the 2020 war. They, they have different ones. So can, can we talk about what their demands are of, as, of the government, of the people of Artsakh? You know, it, it's, it's really, it's a no make sense to discuss what they demand because they demand is, uh, they just package the ecological packaging, the demand of saying, you don't need to be independent. We need to yeah. control your life. We need to control what you're doing here. That's so why we're using the arguments about ecological uh, monitoring the mining business that we have in our Artsakh. We said, no problem, let's bring the best international mm -hmm. uh, experts, let's check the, not only with mining business, but entire region, because we had a lot of concern also with ecology. Mm -hmm. We are people who were very civilized. Our government put a lot of high requirements to the, any private company doing business in Artsakh. So I, Said, from an ecological point of view, no problem. You want to check, we're happy, but not you. Let's send best international experts. Let's check not only our, but entire region, which mm -hmm. a lot of open questions. And I would say to the people who don't understand the situation in here, mm -hmm. check during the last 10 years, how many times any eco protest happened in Azerbaijan, where there's so many oil, gas, chemical mm -hmm. enterprises exist, and you will be surprised to find zero. 
Absolutely. Um, you, you mentioned how this has been an opportunity for the people to kind of rally together, and there's been a cohesiveness between the state of Artsakh, which we're very proud to have, and, and the people. Can you talk to us about some of the ways, look, we're in a humanitarian uh, crisis here, but there's ways that this government is addressing that. Can you talk to us about some of the ways that's happening? The main fundamental basis for being successful if you have a people who trust the government trust each other and they believe about their future and what we try what we try to do every day in the last 16 days uh, it's uh, to build this trust to show transparency mm -hmm. what we all equally getting the same challenges is nobody has a special privilege to build a fairer society. I think this crisis allowed us to bring more with fairness, which was big demand. We, I'm running now operative, uh, how say, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm running emergency institution or special uh, institution which was created because of this uh, blockade. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, every day we analyze the situation with the product, the food, with the medicaments, with the gasoline with uh, all other necessary things which people now started to miss day by day is becoming less and less some of the for example, don't have fruits no vegetables uh, no cigarettes for example it's just not bad maybe for people who yeah <laughs> it's good for health uh, yeah good for health but in the end it's a challenge for people who smoke every day mm. so i yeah we have a uh, this crisis uh, room war room what you name it and you uh, and we include not only people from government also the private sector and we also show you a public private partnership and we're trying to be transparent and we're trying to be very uh, consistent with all what we're trying to say what we're doing and also we're trying to communicate with people yeah. and explain what we're doing for example today I will meet all the restaurants and cafe owners in Stepanagert and we'll try to find a way how to manage a situation which in the current environment. Awesome. So let's talk about, um, there was a big rally here a couple of days ago where over 70,000 people, which you can say is the majority of the residents of Artsakh, came out in full force in a blockade during a humanitarian crisis and you had the chance to uh, address that crowd which was received very well. Um, part of that in address included uh, the fact that Azerbaijan continues to make threats uh, against Artsakh, to make us concede whether it's our right to statehood, our independence, our, our freedom. As the representative of, of the state today, can you say that we are unwilling to bend to any of those concessions? You know, I mentioned in my speech, uh, the 35 years already, it will be in February, mm -hmm. like this... Uh, this fight is started by a previous generation of people who in the Soviet time decided that this is very important to finally get back to mm -hmm. Armenian root Artsakh. And it's 35 years, it was really uh, difficult times when we've been ups and downs and mm -hmm. we all know this is the, uh, not, always be, every, every, uh, not always been very rosy. But what was important a couple of days ago was uh, people again felt were unified, they felt they are really doing something important for them and for their kids and next generation and also they realized responsibility to pass what and since the previous generations passed to us to go to the next generation. That's why I think it was a very important event. I'm very happy that people really came despite all the difficulties and uh, it was showing unity of the Artsakh people. It also showed Azerbaijan and the world how many people lived in Artsakh, which was really, again, very important. But also it showed us that we are together as a power. And um, the key choices, I said, is uh, we don't have so many choices. Or we are continue fighting for our independence, mm -hmm. or we are living, we will live here uh, for the conditions which Azerbaijan will uh, offer us, which I felt myself unacceptable. Or we'll exit from here and go somewhere else, which we unfortunately have with many of our uh, relatives and mm -hmm. during the last hundred years and during the genocide time. So I, the choice is very clear. I made my choice. I said I made my choice. And I believe we made now the choice. I think it was important from personally mm -hmm. become our own choice. Is now we are together made the choice, saying despite all the challenges, despite it will be 
tough and it will be very dangerous and it will be honest and it will be hard road there's nobody promised a rosy uh, easy yeah. way to get the independence we will go this direction I think it was very important um, not referendum but some way reconfirming our right to stay to yeah right, right reconfirming our decision to mm -hmm. stay independent Armenian Artsakh Amazing. Let's let's ask a question on a personal note. I've been reading uh, some articles uh, released by Azerbaijan. They take issue with you personally, which gives a lot of people hope. Why do you think that is? Uh, first of all, we didn't expect that somebody from mm. outside will come to Artsakh. And I always said it's not my only decision. It's the decision of many Armenians who live outside of Artsakh. Artsakh not only Artsakh problem. Artsakh is a problem. Artsakh is a part of Armenian world, and this mm -hmm. is Artsakh is a key element of Armenian world. And I think it was the signal that showed that this is true. It was give hope to the Artsakh people. It gives example to people who are following me, and it's not only one or two person. It's many dozens of people came here, uh, like you are here also before me. It will show again that people really consider Artsakh is a key element of the Armenian world. And the third, of course, being public figure, being well known in the world and have a good connections and reputation um, I bring a lot more attention to Artsakh I would say you can see what's happened in the last uh, month yeah. there were so many interviews from the publications in the United States, in Europe, in Russia and this is definitely what Azerbaijan prefer don't have it they don't want to have it because for them it's better to be silent mm -hmm. and quietly will squeeze out Armenians from Artsakh without talking too much about this, which we are now saying is not possible. And blockade help us create more awareness yeah. of people who people we, who is living here, yeah. what is the situation, and so it's help us to in some way create more uh, some positioning ourselves like in the state of yeah. Armenian uh, Artsakh. There, there's opportunity even in this crisis to show that we can't live under Azerbaijan, that we need to be uh, uh, free and independent, that what they want to do is ethnically cleanse, and it gives us the platform worldwide to speak on this issue. Sure, I think it's also more important, I think people now, I think more, un, I hope they can understand more now the real reality in mm -hmm. Azerbaijan. Look, it's a non-democratic country, mm -hmm. where is the, my own people, Azerbaijan, Azeri Azer, cannot have a right to go to the public. Uh, meetings to create some uh, demonstrations or oppositions and we're talking about human rights and human values about national minorities but let's talk about the real situation in Azerbaijan in a, mm -hmm. uh, without talking about national minorities let's talk about what's happening now in Azerbaijan in the public society and how we are free and independent and how we are really uh, respect their own uh, human rights uh, for mm -hmm. our own people that's why I think it's blockade help people also to understand better. This is not a, it's a fight against the nations, it's a more the state and the, the leader of the state who try to use the external conflict to keep their own people under strong control because we have a full uh, control of information, we have a full control of everything. You cannot easily free to come to Azerbaijan and, 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 mm. and, and go access to ordinary people. So I, I think it was very important for all of us to understand it's not the issue about the Armenians and Azerbaijan people, it's a question about Azerbaijan state who trying to use this conflict to keep their own internal problems under mm. control. Can you tell us a little bit, because uh, folks are wondering from the diaspora, from everywhere around the world, uh, what are what is the Artsakh government doing both within conversations with the Russian peacekeepers and the international community to bring an end to this blockade? Look, we have a humanitarian crisis. This is a real humanitarian blockade. Mm -hmm. I always bring this example. It's like Western Berlin. We need to organize airlift. We need to organize humanitarian uh, air corridor and bring the food, uh, medicaments to. And, and we have an airport here. Yeah, right? We have an airport, and I think it's a real. It's a real possibility for us to open this airport and to create pressure for Azerbaijan saying you cannot just blockade people and do whatever you want. So I, uh, the entire, entire world, international community, Armenian diaspora needs to help uh, to raise this voice about creating this um, airlift opportunity for Armenians living in Artsakh. 
Second, of course, we are understand the Russian peacekeeper, uh, Russian peacekeeper is uh, have a problem with the mandate. It needs to become stronger. It needs to be more clear, much longer, and the more uh, militaries needs to be here to really defend, uh, really, really control the situation better. Because with the less of 2,000 people, they cannot. Uh, provide all the services, all the necessary work that they need to do. So I, for Russian side, we are negotiating about how we can prolong their presence here, mm -hmm. to make it longer, to create more clear uh, expectation about the future, and then to create um, opportunity to bring more uh, peacekeepers here. Amazing. So as you know, we have 120,000 Armenians here. We've got 3 million in, in the homeland in uh, Armenia, but we've also got upwards of 10 million uh, diasporan Armenians that you know organizations like the ANC and various other organizations represent. How can diasporan Armenians today, and I want to ask this in two parts, what can they do today to address this blockade? And, and when that day comes that this blockade is lifted, what can they do to stand with the people and the government to help nation build Artsakh? You know, I won't say only one thing. I don't want to go back and say you need to be proactive, don't be indifferent, try to raise your voice. I want to say one thing to Armenians who live in the diaspora. You don't need to give, you also need to receive. Keeping Artsakh Armenian, you will receive a lot of things which you don't expect and you don't understand yet. It's just it's a two-side street. It's not only a spurk diaspora, must raise their voice, must uh, raise money, must raise the pressure. Mm -hmm. You need, we all need to understand, keeping Artsakh Armenian will become stronger in a different part of the world. Keeping Artsakh Armenian, we will get power to really show the world what it means to be democratic, independent, small, but very uh, happy state with the understanding of all the challenges we're facing. That's why Artsakh, keeping, keeping Artsakh independent and Free is a really important element, not only for people who live here, mm -hmm. 120,000, but for 3 million who live in Armenia and whatever numbers we don't know exactly, lives uh, outside of Armenia and Artsakh. This is very important because we always say, oh, diaspora must help, diaspora must support, diaspora must uh, be engaged. Mm -hmm. I will say, we don't realize, to losing Artsakh, it will be big pain and uh, will hurt everyone. That's mm -hmm. where you live. Absolutely. Mr. Bartayan, as uh, the state minister and as a representative of the people here, if you had one message to the world as it be from Artsakh, what would it be? Don't be indifferent. This is the most important element of the current situation in the world. We have so many challenges, so many problems. It was pandemic, it was war, it was now kind of conflict in a different part of the world happening again. People become very indifferent. I say the main main message, Artsakh is a unique place where people was living a thousand of years in our motherland and um, allowing to have a, one more humanitarian catastrophe, ethnic cleaning or genocide or what the war, it will be really disaster for this region, it will be disaster for all of you who live maybe in a very nice places, but we all see how the life is changed and that's matter where you uh, stay, you never feel you're safe. You will not stop this attitude to acceptance of the war aggressions. We will have a big challenge for the entire world. So I stop the war in Artsakh, stop of ethnic cleaning in Artsakh. We are stopping the future problems in our world. Amazing. Thank you, Mr. Varta, and we appreciate your time, and I'm sure the diaspora appreciates hearing directly from you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.